जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी हे हा कुंज बिहा गोपीजनवा गिरिवर गिरिवा गिरिवर सूर्णंदन गजन हंझनायसौरनंदन गजन हंझनाय जम्मून थेरा है भार मुन थी जम्मून थेरा है भार मुन हरे हरे कृष्णा 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hey Hey Hare Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hey Hey Goranga Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Nithai Gaur Hey Gauranga Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna, 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 the tiger, Hare Rama, 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 and the tiger, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Har Hari Ram Gauranga Jaya Krishna Balaram Krishna Balaram Krishna Balaram Jaya Krishna Balaram And the Jai Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jai Krishna Balaram. Hey, Krishna Balaram. And it's a good thing. Hey, go to Vrimanandi. Jaya, Jaya, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jaya, Prabhu Pan. Jaya, Jaya, Prabhu Pan. Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jai Prabhu Pan. Oh, Pemanandi, Hari Hari Guru, Shri
Prabhu Pan Ki Jai. So, as was directed, we are uh, going to prepare our minds, hearts, and life for the appearance day of the Lord on the 12th of this month, which is one week from today. And uh, so I chose a verse from the 24th chapter called Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is verse number 66. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jato Gata Pratigriham Raja Ekatarto Advam Rupam Sutta Satani Kotoru Daraha Upadhyate Shupuru Shokratu Beer Sami Jay Atmanam Atma Inigamam Pratihan Janesu Jato gata priti grihan raja ekti edik tarto. Advam rupam suta satani kotor daraha. Upadhyateshu purusha trati bir samije. Atmanam Atmanigamam Pratayang Janesu Jato Gatam Pritigrihan Raja Ek Eti Tarto Advam Rupam Sutta Satani Kotoradharaha Utpadhyateshu purusha karti bir sami jay. Atmanam atmanigamam pratiyan janesu. Atma 
ladies. <laughs> Jata, after taking birth as the son of Vasudev, <coughs> Gata went away, Pratir Grihat, from the houses of his father, Rajam, to Vrindavan, Edhita Artha, to exalt the position of Vrindavan, Hadva, killing there, Ripun, many demons, Sutta Satani, hundreds of sons, Krita Uru Dara, accepting many thousands of wives, the best of women, Utpadya, Bigat, Tesu, in them, Purusha, the Supreme Person, who exactly resembles a human being, Kratubi, by many sacrifices, Samiye, worshipped Atmanam, himself, because he is the person worshipped by all sacrifices. Atma Nigamam. Exactly according to the ritualistic ceremonies of the Vedas. Pratyayan. Expanding the Vedic principles. Janesu. Among the people in general. So this is a long translation. Please listen up. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, known as Lila Purushottam, appeared as the son of Vasudev, but immediately left his father's home and went to Vrindavan to expand his loving relationships with his confidential devotees. In Vrindavan, the Lord killed many demons, and afterwards he returned to Dwarka, where according to Vedic principles, he married many wives who were the best of women, begot through them hundreds of sons and performed sacrifices for his own worship to establish the principles of household life, householder life. Srila Prabhupada's purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1515, Vedaischa Sava Aham Eva Vedya. By all the Vedas, it is it is Krishna who is to be known. Lord Sri Krishna, setting an example by his own behavior, performed many ritualistic ceremonies described in the Vedas and established the principles of Grihastha life by marrying many wives and begetting many children just to show people in general how to be happy by living according to Vedic principles. The center of Vedic sacrifice is Krishna, Vedais Chisaham Aham Eva Vedyo, Vedya. To advance in human life, human society must follow the Vedic principles personally demonstrated by Lord Krishna in his householder life. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of God. And so that's a key word. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Reciprocations of loving affairs and ecstasies 
are possible only in Vrindavan. Therefore, just after his appearance as the son of Vasudev, he immediately left for Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Lord not only took part in loving affairs with his mother and father, the gopis and the cowherd boys, but he also gave liberation to many demons by killing them. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 4.8, Paritranayam sarunam vinasanaya chaduskritam. The Lord appears in order to protect the devotees and kill the demons. This is fully exhibited by his personal behavior. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is understood by Arjun to be purusham shasvatam divyam, the eternal transcendental supreme person. Here also we find the word utpadya teshu purusha. Therefore, it is to be concluded that the Absolute Truth is Purusha, a person. The impersonal feature is but one of the many features of his personality. Ultimately, he is a person. He is not impersonal. Not only is he Purusha, a person, but he is also, he is the Lila Purushita, the best of all persons. Om Agyan Timirandasya. Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Veda Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stabditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pastyatyade Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubischa Kripa Sindhu Pe Pacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namahona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. It's a nice verse um, Gives many um, qualities and characteristics and nature of the Supreme Personality of God and it also helps to understand that the Lord is setting the principle for teaching how one should follow spiritual practice and that is following the Vedic principles um, here Mm, the Lord is given the name, or He has the name, Lila Purushottama. That means that uh, He is the best of all persons, and His activities are the best of all activities. It mentions that after He was born, or appeared, you can't say the Lord is actually born, because there's one verse spoken by Queen Kunti, in the first canto, and her prayers to Lord that the unborn is taking birth. So that's apparently a contradiction in, ter in words, but actually for the Lord, all contradictions amalgamate in his, what we say, in the absolute principle of his existence. So in the Lord there is no contradiction, so although he takes birth, he never takes birth. <laughs> But he appears to take birth, and he did, in the jail cell of Kamsa. And it mentions, and of course we all have heard the pastime, how the Lord, after he appeared, he didn't stay. He immediately arranged for Vasudev to take him to Vrindavan. He was eager to get to Vrindavan. He could have performed pastimes in Vatura, and that would have been his choice, but he decided to go to Vrindavan because as mentioned here, he comes to exchange loving relationships with his devotees. And Prabhupada wants to make that point as the essential point here that this is what Krishna consciousness is about. It's about exchanging love with Krishna. <laughs> that is the actual goal. There's no second goal, 
there are we're intermediate goals to help us reach that goal, such as purifying our heart through chanting the holy names and uh, st understanding scriptures and learning how to live according to those scriptures, learning about the nature of the Supreme Personality of God, and performing so many other religious and spiritual activities. But these are all meant to build our consciousness towards the, the, the ultimate goal, which is to awaken our love for Krishna. And we see that where is the best place that those uh, loving relationships are exhibited is Sri Vrindavan Dham. Krishna in his mood as Krishna, <laughs> he has many moods, but when you, under, when you know the word Krishna, what it actually means, it means that he is actually the foundation for loving relationships because he attracts everybody. And in those loving relationships, he doesn't play the role, or he actually is in his natural world. When he's not in Vrindavan, he's playing other roles. But he, Krishna in Vrindavan is the real Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we say that it's Krishna in Dwarka, it is Krishna in Mathura, and Krishna manifests himself in different incarnations of himself. But Krishna in Vrindavan is the, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita, 1865, as followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are worshipping Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. That means that devotees are following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan in order to awaken the mood of the loving devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, according to the different mellows or rasas in that, in that uh, what we say, very, very mysterious realm. We hear through the scriptures what is Vrindavan, but nobody can understand Vrindavan. It's, it's hidden. In fact, hardly anybody knows, at least anybody who is living on this planet, knows actually what Vrindavan is. And maybe on highly elevated persons who are living in that consciousness, but those persons are quite rare. Even amongst the pure devotees, there are many pure devotees who have never, cannot understand Vrindavan either. Because of the intimacy of Krishna's mood, he performs activities from him, as himself. Himself is the loving boy of Vrindavan who plays with cows, has many girlfriends, and likes to steal butter, and does many other mischievous and very, what well, we say, attractive types of activities just for his own transcendental pleasure. But the thing about when Krishna does something for his own pleasure, everyone benefits. Everyone also finds pleasure because when Krishna does it, it becomes so wonderful, so attractive. That is the nature of Krishna. Just like sometimes we say he steals butter. And anybody who steals anything is not considered to be, you know, a good guy. <laughs> the person non grata or also punishable. But when Krishna steals, it's the most wonderful things. He passes stool and urine on the floor, and then he grabs the tail of the calves, and he goes sliding through it. <laughs> so don't try that, <laughs> especially in the temple. <laughs> Those activities are only relegated to one who is completely free from all, I mean, not one, but Krishna himself. He performs these activities just to charm the hearts of his devotees and for his own transcendental pleasure. As Prabhupada said, whatever Krishna does, he does for his own pleasure. But when we do things for our own pleasure, sometimes nobody benefits, even us. <laughs> but when Krishna does things for his own pleasure, everybody enjoys and everybody can learn something from his activities. So this principle of uh, Lila Purusham, he immediately doesn't want to stay, he wants to take part, he's eager to get to Vrindavan and perform his loving pastimes with his devotees, and that's his mood. 
when uh, he was in Vrindavan, and just after he had killed that one demon called Agasura, a big, gigantic snake, Jai Si Panchatattva Ki Jai. This snake was so big that when he opened his mouth from the bottom of his lower lip to the top, it was eight miles high. You can't imagine. <laughs> Nobody can imagine it. You're sitting in an airplane flying some from one country to another country, and they're saying, my dear people, we are flying at 35,000 feet. <laughs> and 29,000 feet, 29,000 something is one mile. So 35,000 is just about well, a little bit over a mile high. So, what, you know, eight miles high? <laughs> Powerful demon. Krishna killed that demon, and when he did, the soul of that demon merged into the body of Krishna. And the demigods were able to see it, and Lord Brahma later on heard about it. And Lord Brahma, when he heard about it, he wasn't sure who was performing such activity, so he came to Vrindavan, and he saw Krishna. For some reason, he wasn't able to recognize Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he thought, who is this person killing this demon? He must be a great person. But let me try to play some tricks on him. So Krishna was sitting on the banks of his, on the river, Jamuna, with his cowherd friends. Sometimes you see that beautiful picture. It's so nice. Krishna is like, it's like the world of a lotus. He's in the middle and all his cowherd friends are around him, and they're all watching him. You see, each one of them are looking at Krishna, and they're, they're taking their lunch. So that's Krishna. He likes to sit and enjoy lunch with his friends. <laughs> Killing demons, I mean, that, hey, that's kind of, kind of like something he has to do. So he does it, and he also enjoys it, but not as much as he enjoys sitting with his friends and telling jokes and eating, eating each other's lunch. Well, Krishna enjoys like that. So one, this powerful demigod, Lord Brahma, he wanted to test Krishna how he decides to steal the calves and cowherd boys and put them in mystic slumber in a cave some distance away. Krishna had to leave for a few moments because the calves or the cows had left to find better grasses. So Krishna said to his friends, I'll be back, you enjoy your lunch. But when Krishna came back, he realized that Brahma had done something. <laughs> so what he did, he manifested himself as all the other cowherd boys and calves, exactly according to their natures and according to every little characteristic there. And so everything was just like it was. Just to think, well, this 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 uh, demigod, he thinks he's so great. <laughs> so Krishna wanted to continue with his leelas, so he just manifested. And of course, it's a very long, long pastime, but it's full of so many wonderful uh, messages on how Krishna performs his activities and just to charm the hearts of his devotees. But after... Brahma realized that what he had done was a great offense. He understood now that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, he saw many, many things. Krishna expanded himself into those cows and cowherd boys, but then each one of them took on Vishnu forms with four arms, holding all the symbols of Lord Vishnu. And Brahma, when he saw that, he realized he was really bewildered. He couldn't understand anything. So then... He fell with his foreheads at the lotus feet of the Lord and started to offer really feeling prayers to the Lord, realizing that this was my worshipable Lord, Sri Krishna himself. And now Krishna is standing there. He's, he's a little boy. In his one hand, he's got some yogurt and some fruit. And he's just there with this big de de demigod offering prayers. Now, the, as it was explained by the Acharyas, Krishna couldn't wait for him to get over with the prayers so he could go back and play with his friends again. <laughs> he was just thinking, all right, 
come on, I'll stay here and offer your prayers, but please hurry up because <laughs> I want to go back and be with my friends and eat prasadam and joke. <laughs> So, you know, he, he had, Krishna has to do a lot of things that he, because of his position, he does. <laughs> and so that was the point that this, uh, he, Krishna just loves to perform his pastimes with his devotees. Here it also mentions, and it's kind of interesting, I think there was, requires some discussion on this. Prabhupada said that Krishna came and he married so many wives and had so many children. And then Prabhupada says that, you know, we should follow in his footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's some some uh, discussion needs to be <laughs> explained. But I think what Prabhupada is, is indicating, it says that, in, in other words, he performed household life in the ideal way. He followed the religious principles. That was the whole thing. There's one point where pastime where Krishna wakes up in the morning, he hears the the crowing of the rooster, he gets up and then what does he do? He prepares himself and then he sits in meditation on himself. And then it's mentioned we should not perform that exact activity. We don't meditate on ourselves when we get up. Maybe some people like to do that and most maybe most people do. <laughs> They may meditate on something they want to enjoy. But the idea was that we should, uh, the first thing we do when we wake up after preparing ourselves with proper hygiene is that we, we absorb ourselves in the thoughts of Krishna, chanting the holy names or worshiping Krishna in different ways. So that was the example that is being men mentioned here. And although he had many wives, he was able to maintain each of the wives nicely. Therefore, he was the ideal husband. And he had many children, and many children were also ideal in their behavior, except one or two. <laughs> one, but that's another pastime. But here, it's, it's mentioned how the Lord actually sets the standard. Mahajano yena katasampanta. Or a better verse is the verse from the Bhagavad Gita where whatever great men do, common men follow in their footsteps. And whatever standards they set by exemplary activities, all the world pursues. So people like to imitate God when he performs certain activities which are about sense enjoyment, such as marrying so many ladies. And or when Lord Shiva smokes ganja. But Prabhupada would always say, you know, if you want to imitate Lord Shiva, the hippies used to do that. And Prabhupada would say, then you have to drink an ocean of poison also. Because he's known as Nilakanta, he drank an ocean of poison to save the world from this deadly poison. And Krishna left at Govardhan Hill when he was seven and a half years old, so if you want to dance with so many girls, then you first lift Govardhan Hill to prove that you are, you know, you have that virility. <laughs> so, but nobody can do either of these things. <laughs> so, but therefore, it's very fashionable, and especially for those who are not fixed in devotional service, to idolize Krishna in the sense of trying to imitate Krishna in order to fulfill some desires for sense gratification. But therefore the, the acharyas give us a clear, what we say, uh, delineation between those activities that are meant to be, what we say, followed and those activities which are restricted. Teja sam rajosayar means that one cannot imitate the powerful but one should follow their teachings. That's the most important thing. Even when Srila Prabhupada was here, people would like to imitate Prabhupada. Sometimes the way he walked, the way he spoke, or even some of his gestures. I mean, they say sometimes the best form of worship is imitation. <laughs> but sometimes the motivation is wrong, and one wants to be, present himself as being attractive like that. 
by imitating great souls. But that's anushkaran and nuskaran. Nuskaran means to follow in the footsteps of nushkaran or vice versa. Yeah, nus nusharan means to follow in the footsteps, nuskaran means to imitate. So imitation is cheap. <laughs> so one should practice Krishna consciousness by according to the directions and follow the principles very carefully. So in here, we what do we do in here? We want to hear as much as we can about Krishna. Srinbata Swakata Krishna Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha Nridyansto Sto Apadrani Vidhunoti Srihit Satam. This verse is spoken by Sutta Goswami in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But he says the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, purifies the heart of one who develops eagerness to hear about his activities. So when we have not only is the process of hearing purifying, but when Krishna sees that that person is eager to hear, he helps to purify the heart of the devotee. So that eagerness doesn't so easily come. How do you get the eagerness to hear about Krishna? By associating with people who are eager to hear about Krishna. That is the best form by taking that type of association. And the other way is just perform the activities of hearing for a continuous time. Um, just by reading regularly and just hearing, reading, you develop a taste for that, that activity. Same with chanting. The more you chant, the more you work on the quality of your chanting, the better your chanting before, becomes. We were mentioning this last night. Whatever you emphasize in Krishna consciousness, you can become good at. <laughs> what if you want to do? Perform an activity and you emphasize that. If it's in line with the instructions of the spiritual master, you can perfect that particular service, whatever it is, deity worship, preaching, or whatever. So that's, that's how Krishna consciousness works. And so we want to actually perfect the principle of loving Krishna. So here's the way to love Krishna, is to hear about Krishna more and more, to speak about Krishna, and to remember what we speak about. Of course, when you speak, you remember. This is the secret of remembrance. Remembrance comes by way of repeating what you hear. Sometimes devotees say, well, I read, but then I forget everything I read, or maybe I remember just a few things. If you want to remember, just just repeat. Repeti or repeating increases memory. There was a statistic in the United States. The United States like to, likes to do statistics all the time because they got nothing else to do. They get bored. <laughs> they have statistics on everything. <laughs> So they did a statistic about remembering. So the one is, they said, average. Now everything I say is average, it's not absolute. That the per person remembers 10% of what they read, average. 20% of what they hear, average. 30% of what they see, average. 50% of what they see and hear together, when you combine visual and audio, you get up to 50%, 70% of what we do, and 90% of what you teach. So if you want to remember something, here's, this, here's the way to do it, is just repeat it like that. And if you repeat the same thing over, you become expert. And if you know one particular pastime of the Lord, and you can know it perfectly, that's enough to purify your heart and go back home, back to God. And this is the power of spiritual knowledge when it's absorbed completely. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Janma Karma Chime Divyam Evam Yo Veti Tattvataha Taktvat Purnam Jana Taktvat Deham Purnam Janma Naiti Mam Eti Sorjuna. If you know, but what he means by know is realize my nature. 
of my activities and my appearance, if you realize that, then you're, you, we can return back to, back to Godhead. Prabhupada was talking to Shruti Kirti Prabhu, and Prabhupada, Shruti Kirti tells this one little no, we antidote that Prabhupada. Prabhupada was with him, and he was. He just started to talk. He said, "If you if you read one page of nectar devotion, you can become fully self-realized." And then Prabhupada said, "No, actually, if you read one paragraph of nectar devotion, you can be fully self-realized." No, if you read one sentence. You can become fully self-realized. Shruti Kirti is just listening, you know, he's just listening. And then Prabhupada said, no, one word. <laughs> if you can realize one word, <laughs> that's the power of transcendental knowledge. It's not static. Static means it's limited. It's dynamic means it's unlimited. So, therefore, when we hear about Krishna's pastimes over and over, and we absorb that, and gradually we're becoming purified, and that purification is awakening our attraction for Krishna. When attraction reaches a certain level of potency, then that attraction turns into affection and ultimately love. <laughs> and that's the goal. As love is the highest sentiment and the most perfect... Uh, the, the goal of life is to actually exchange love with Krishna. That is the actual goal. So when we are focused on that goal through the process of hearing and chanting, of course, and serving, then uh, it's just a matter of time before perfection comes. Okay, any questions or comments? Anyone? Nobody? No questions? If there is not if there is nobody else, I have a question. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, in in the verse uh, it uh, I know in the verse yeah, that Krishna uh, sets an example uh, of uh, yeah. Uh, no, of this, uh, how to follow lower religious principles. Hmm. Sometimes devotees speak uh, about uh, surrendering to Krishna in a way <coughs> that you have to be prepared to accept anything from Krishna, even breaking his own lower religious principles that uh, that he gave. Uh, and, and they speak in a way as if in Krishna there is some transcendental malice and you have to be really prepared to put up with it if you want to go back home, back to Godhead, be prepared to anything. But then again Krishna is uh, never breaking his uh, yeah. religious principles. The so, prime so. example prime example is Bhagavad Gita. Arjun, he had so many good philanthropical naturally good-hearted sentiments towards the opposite side because of their, his affection for them and his relationship with them. He didn't want to fight, but Krishna said, you're a fool, you got to fight. <laughs> so you might say, to use a sentence, God is encouraging a peaceful man to take up violence. <laughs> but Arjun did it, but then he understood this, this is actually the highest religious principle is to follow the instructions of the Lord. But that that particular feature is not a is not a normal thing. That happens in circumstance and it usually happens very rarely. Mm -hmm. But therefore you have to hear from the spiritual master in order to get a clarification on that. Just like Sometimes people take things Prabhupada said out of context. Like, you know, 
and the karmis are all using they're they're stealing everything from Krishna and they're using it for their own sense gratification. So the devotees think, well, maybe I I should steal it back from them. <laughs> and that went on for years, in the term in the name of San, Sankirtan, cheating people just to get as much as we could because they're cheaters anyway. So if we cheat for Krishna, that's good. But that was never an instruction. That was just a, that just an understanding that we. So therefore, you know, people take it out of context or use it in the wrong way. So you have to have a clear understanding of, you know, of the instruction. Even when Arjuna was asked to fight, he questioned Krishna. And the whole Bhagavad Gita is Krishna convincing him to fight, really. And Krishna took the time and the you know the energy to explain everything in detail. And then after he did, he said, I've told you everything, now do what you want to do. <laughs> he still gave him his choice. <laughs> so yeah, it's not that we, you know, accept these things that are difficult or impossible or against religious principles blindly and accept them as religious principles. We should also get clarification from the authorities. The authority is the spiritual master. Yeah, so it, there are times, because when you come right down to it, for morality is actually created by God, and if God wants to change it, then that's still morality if he changes it. <laughs> Hmm. Pallad Maharaj was watching his father being killed. Prabhupada said, Who, what, what son or daughter would stand and watch somebody kill their parents or their father? But Prabhupada said he was glorifying the killer because <laughs> his father was a demon and the Lord came. So you'll find apparent contradictions, but when you understand deeper with explanations, you understand there's a higher principle that is being uh, developed. Or something is a higher goal that is meant. But devotees have a tendency just to say these things without the proper understanding. And that can lead to trouble, like it's like it has done in our society. It's given our society a bad name. You know, both devotees on book distribution would cheat people. <laughs> you know. uh, and sometimes they would even. Um, I know one story. One one devotee's father was in the airport and he was got he was approached by another devotee for book distribution and um, you know the book distributor was really arrogant and he he did he actually hit hit the person later on the police came and because it was a father of a devotee he he dropped the charges against he said my son is devotee is also so I'm I'm not going to press charges against him but he actually hit this person, punched him, because he wasn't going along with, you know, they were arguing at one point. He was trying to cheat him, and he, he understood that he was cheating him like that. <laughs> so, you know, you, so this, this goes on in the name of, you know, Krishna consciousness, but it's not. We're not the International Society for Thieves. <laughs> Although... We, you know, the the non devotees are breaking the laws all the time, but we don't. We have to live according to the secular society, and practice Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, we'll be seen as you know, as just you know, a bunch of hippies. That's all. Maybe in your country it's not so bad, but in America, still people. Have have memories of how that our movement was, you know.
acting outside of normal moral and proper behavior and only to get money. So ultimately they were trying to, you know, do everything for Krishna, but you can't you can only do that up to and within a certain limit. There was one devotee, he he wanted to preach to the drunkards. So he decided to go into the taverns and sit down with them and have, you know, get some alcohol and sit there and preach to them. So he was drinking just so he could be sociable and get their confidence and then give them a book or preach to them. But after some time, he left. He left Krishna consciousness. So people, you know, you can't break the principles in order to, you know, somehow or other say you're practicing devotional service. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.